We have a lot of seniors who are worried right now. How is all this affecting them besides the fact that obviously they're older and they feel very vulnerable? Yeah, well, first, it's great to be with you. Sorry we can't be in person, but I'm very happy that we're following all of the CDC recommendations about physical distance. You know, at this time, um, it is a worrisome time for older adults, and, you know, for good reason. It does appear that older adults, especially those with pre-existing medical conditions, do appear to be more vulnerable to becoming severely ill, Walt, as you know, mm -hmm. with coronavirus. And that coupled with the fact that many older adults were experiencing social isolation or loneliness prior to the virus and pandemic beginning, for many people can feel a bit like a one-two punch. Yeah, that's, that's a different, we're, we're hearing that, it's, 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 it's tough. So the next question is kind of following up on that. What are the health risks of social isolation for my grandparents? They're in their late 70s, that's the next text. Yes, yes, I'm happy to have that question. And again, I would want people to understand that older adults are at greater risk of experiencing social isolation or loneliness. And social isolation is about more than physical distance. It's across our lifespan, having a social network uh, that we can interact with frequently with high quality interaction. And it's also about older adults having access to critical community resources, such as transportation and other supports that they need. Oh. Loneliness, Walt, is our own view. Uh, it's subjective. It's whether or not you or I feel that we have access to community supports and other people. Now, to answer your question more specifically, the negative health guns of prolonged social isolation are significant. Well, get this, it is the negative health equivalent of smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Just the drain on your, on your mental well-being. Um, that's, Absolutely. Yeah, that's amazing. Okay, let's, let's try to find a solution with this next text here. What can older adults do to stay connected to their loved ones and their communities while being encouraged to practice social distancing or stay in the house? I mean, obviously, you can still get out walking around. You just need to stay away from others, right? No, that's right. I mean, certainly all states, you're included, have very, very clear public health guidelines about how we can maintain our exercise uh, and our physical well-being and emotional well-being while still keeping social distancing going. But I do have some tips for older adults. You know, I think it's hard, Walt. I don't know about what you hear, but many older adults are fiercely independent and reluctant to reach out and ask for the support that they need. But during this time, it's important to have a plan. So one tip I have is to take a friend's inventory. Now is time to sit down and write down the names and contact information for individuals we can reach out to. Mm -hmm. You might start with your inner circle. So it's your uh, next door neighbors and or your family members. But think back to work colleagues or people you went to school with. Take that first step to make a phone call and reach out. I guarantee you they will want to hear from you. 